Hey everyone, it's Olivia at OMG Artistry, Joyco brand storyteller. And thank you so much, Salon Centric, for having me on here today. So I want to talk about all things social media. I have been dying to do this and I feel like I've been getting more questions than ever about social media and what a time to start working on our businesses, right? So I have, um, I've been teaching now social media for about five, six years. Um, I did not go to school for social media. However, I did go to school for videography. So I learned at a super young age how to create content and create video and kind of just like keep attention spans of the clientele who I'm marketing to online. So hi everybody, I see you. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Um, so yeah. This is like a huge passion of mine and it was a hobby that actually turned into a career now. So I have three different jobs. Uh, I'm a stylist. I've been a hairstylist now for over legally 10 years, but since I was 13, so I'm 31 right now, you can do the math. Um, I also work with Joyco as a brand storyteller. I represent their uh, company, I love them. And then I also teach social media. So you guys are more than welcome to ask whatever questions you have about social media. But let's get right into it. There are, I get asked a lot, what's wrong with my page? right? What is wrong with my page? I don't understand why I'm not getting clientele. I don't understand maybe why um, I'm not getting my ideal clientele, right? We are going to definitely talk about that. Um, but I'm, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. Where are you guys from? You can kind of shoot off where you're at. Um, but in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we do deal with a lot of blonding and balayage and I love doing blonde hair. I actually, um, Right when, right when balayage first came out, I was like, oh, this is a lot. This is a lot of time. This is, this is, I'd rather do highlights. And literally, I only do highlights or in foil, foilage, right? I said to myself, I go, who do I want to sit in my chair? And it took a real hard time for me to actually turn away business to, in order to keep those people in my chair. But I did it and I shifted through social media. So I see Iowa, New York City, New York. Wow, a lot of New York people in here. Uh, Massachusetts, Central Illinois, Washington State. That's awesome. Um, are you guys open right now or are you closed? Let me know. We don't have a date yet for us in Florida, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. So anyways, what I started to do was I started to say, who is my ideal clientele, right? So I want somebody that wants foils. I want foiling inside of hair. I want somebody who's nice. Guys, my rule in order to sit in my chair is you have to be a nice person. So when people come in and they start to talk, that's actually my first check mark if I want them to be my client or not. My second one would be frame of mind, okay? Frame of mind is very important to me. If I say to them, you're going to need three, four, five appointments to get what you want, and they say, okay, good, then you're a client of mine. And then the third one would be price. So we can talk a little bit about that later on. So there is one thing um, that I do do, and it comes down to direct messages, okay? Direct messages is one of the most important ways in order for you to achieve your clientele. That's where all of um, our consultations go into play. So let's say right now that maybe you guys are closed and you have a lot of people that are asking you to come in. FaceTime would be a massive, massive way for you guys to get an idea of the person, right? Talking to them, get an idea of what their hair is going to look like. You don't have to necessarily give pricing over um, FaceTime, but just that's why I love Instagram because when people reach out to you via Instagram, you get like a very full perspective of this person's lifestyle, right? Like if they go boating a lot uh, and they're always in salt water, you're gonna know that for a matter of fact that their hair is extremely probably windblown, right? Think about that, windblown, um, broken in certain areas and they probably can't even hold on to a toner, okay? 
Um, you can also see maybe what their previous color history is. Maybe they were red at one point. So you know under that brown, it's gonna be red, right? So um, it, it creates full transparency because you know sometimes people do not always tell the truth when it comes to hair. So what I like to do is when it comes down to my actual physical posting on Instagram, I follow the rules that I've created and it's called the rules of EEI, okay? EEI is to entertain, to educate, and to inspire, okay? So let's say for instance, let me grab this product, okay? So this is, no, let me give you something else. Okay, so let's say this brush, right? This brush, um, we just ordered a bunch of new brushes. I'm gonna give you guys really good content creation ideas because it's not always just about hair. It's about product too. We need to showcase the products that we're using in the hair because we want people to buy it, okay? So let's say for instance, this is a brush and I really wanna sell this brush or I really wanna sell a treatment. This'll go in line with shampoos. This'll go along with balayage, everything, okay? So if you just post a picture, I do love this brush too. If you just post a picture of this brush, did you teach them, and you wrote no caption, what is the purpose of just posting a picture of a brush? There is no purpose. So being purposeful about our posts is extremely important. And that's why I use the rules of EEI. So you need to entertain whoever's watching, right? And who are you talking to? Are you talking to clients? Or are you making hair coloring videos talking to other hairstylists all the time? Think about that. If you want to showcase a brush, you gotta say, does your hair, like think of like infomercials, right? Like. Does your hair always get tangly? Do you feel like you're always breaking it off? Like this is the brush for you, you know, whatever you wanna write. So that's the entertainment aspect of it when it comes to your posts. And this goes into your captions. Hi guys, I see you. Um, so this goes into the entertainment aspect of it. Same thing too, when you're doing, um, let's say you're doing hair color and you're showcasing a picture, how are you entertaining somebody? Like give them a story, give them a background of this mother of six never comes and gets her hair done. Um, maybe you, uh, excuse me, this mother of six never gets her hair done and she never takes time for herself. Uh, she wanted something that was beautiful, bright, blonde, and then this is what we did. And then that's when you go into your formulations and you can talk like that. So that's the entertainment part of um, the EEI. The second part, the second E is education. Every single one of like my last posts is all about education. Um, my Instagram page is at OMG Artistry. And if you guys ever feel stuck when it comes to captions, just go to my page because I have so many different examples of how I really structure um, my captions. Does anyone in here have issues with your captions? Um, you could just say yes, me, or even just any issues you kind of have like as a whole. So with your captions, you're entertaining them and then you're educating them, okay? So let's go back to the whole brush analogy. So if you just post a picture of a brush, you're not entertaining them, you're not educating them, what is the purpose of posting this picture? So what you need to tell them is, this brush, I'm just gonna make this up off the top of my head, right? So this brush is fantastic for detangling hair. Um, it's super lightweight. It doesn't break easily. Um, it's flexible. I don't know, give it all the specs, right? You guys are saying, yes, yes, you have all these problems with captions. So when you're talking about treatments, you need to bullet point exactly what the specs of a treatment is. When you have a shampoo, you need to, uh, my name is at OMG Artistry on Instagram. I'll have uh, salon centric posted on here. So you need to be telling people. So go to your pages. After you're done with me, go to your pages and go look at maybe the products you've posted or the treatments that you've posted. Were you entertaining in the caption? Were you educating? And then the last part is to inspire, okay? And inspire basically means that you want to evoke something out of the consumer that is watching. So then they're gonna come in and say, damn, I really need that brush, that how-to tutorial video of you brushing your hair. I'm just giving an example. 
really inspired me to come and ask you about it and now I want to buy it. Um, I saw how beautiful the before and after was of that conditioning treatment. Like that's something that I need in my hair. Um, everything that you said in the specs is something that like I need. So through entertainment, through education and through inspiration is what's going to start giving you guys ideas on how to post on your Instagram pages. Okay. You don't just have to post hair. I think people get so caught up that they think, oh my God, I have no hair pictures. You can post pictures of product. You can post pictures of your salon, of your workstations. You can post pictures of you, right? And give a little bio about who you are and what your passion is. So there are so many different options. And oh, hi guys, I see everybody in here. I see Courtney, I see Alexa. Hi, hi, hi. Um, so yeah, these are just some sort of ideas for you to really post. Now, another great thing that I do is, you know, we've all been kind of going through this like weird phase of like, am I inspired? Am I ready to get back to work? Should I be posting? Whatever. We need to always be showing up for our client, okay? And the reason why I say that is because think about, sorry for anyone who's in a multi-level marketing company, think about how you feel when someone hits you up for multi-level marketing, okay? When you're not constantly staying in touch with your clients and you only post when you need them, think about how they feel. So you should always be adding value, always adding value to your clientele and showing up always, not because I'm about to open up the doors, now I'm gonna start posting on social media, no, you should be constantly engaging with them and writing back. So one thing you guys might not know is if you post your picture, your video on Instagram, Instagram is actually so smart now that they know if you're just there to post and get off the internet or you're there to post and engage. So Instagram actually rewards you for engaging with other people online. Okay, so let me clarify that. Let's say I posted like a video today, okay? I try to be near my phone for like the next 30 minutes to an hour, and then I'll just kind of like uh, communicate with people throughout the day, because if Instagram sees that I'm there and I'm constantly engaging on my own posts, that I'm actually boosting my post because I'm, it's like a game, it's a video game. Instagram is literally a freaking video game, guys. It's all about the algorithms of the constant traction of how you're working with other people online, how you're talking. Do you know they're so smart? Think about it like this, because obviously Facebook owns Instagram, okay? You know how on Facebook, like all your friends show up? Well, through language, through freaking language, Instagram knows if, that's your friend. By I always, my whole life, I always talk to people like they're my friends in person, whatever. You could be a valid person, you're my friend, right? So I'm constantly saying like, thank you, love. Like, oh my God, I appreciate that. I'll even try to like spark conversations within a comment. And what ends up happening is through algorithms, let's say for instance, uh, Courtney comments, on my Instagram page, okay? On my picture. Well, if I comment back to Courtney, what ends up happening is Courtney gets the notification, okay, that I commented back. And then what do you do? You go back to my page. So Instagram says, wow, you've been to Olivia's page two times today. You must really like Olivia, so we're gonna make sure that Olivia shows up on your feed more often because now it's a common interest. So think about Instagram like this. Before, it used to just be the feed, right? It just, it was just the feed of Instagram and that's how you used to communicate with people. And then it came direct messages. And then it came, um, so we have feed, direct messages, and then stories came into play and then going live, and now it's IGTV. So you're looking at five, six different ways to communicate with people via Instagram. So there's five different social medias, okay, hear me out, 
five different social medias on Instagram now. That's why you need to be everywhere. That's why you need to be posting in your stories, doing direct messages. Do you know that they actually reward you for getting back to people via direct message? Direct messages count as engagement. Consider that. So if you're constantly talking to people, they're gonna constantly boost you up in the algorithms because you're playing the game. You're playing the Instagram algorithm game, okay? Does this sound exhausting? Yes, it does. But the thing is, it becomes a habit, right? Like it, it becomes a habit because you have a better why as to why you're doing it, okay? So my why for Instagram is to always entertain. Okay, I always entertain my people. I always love to educate. Um, you're gonna see my husband right there. You can say hi. <laughs> um, he's great. Uh, so I always love to entertain no matter what I'm doing. So I entertain and I educate. Like those are like my massive whys, okay? Um, I, I don't call them followers, I call them friends, right? I want, to, I want to accumulate more friends online and more of an audience because what ends up happening is when people see my work and they recreate, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, I do a lot of hair hacks right now. Hair hacks is something that I have found um, a passion in besides posting hair coloring videos all the time. Like I post, I post a lot of hair color videos, but I, I get bored, right? So I'm like, you know what? Let me do something with hair hacks that talks to everyone. And what I mean by everyone is I'm targeting people with hair. That's everyone, okay? So if they have long hair, if they have short hair, if they have pixie hair, hair hacks can help them. Um, this is the best social media video I've ever seen. Thank you, Natasha. That is so sweet. So you guys can actually just start spitting questions at me and I will do like full Q and A um, based around your questions. I need to find my passion in social media. Trust me, I get it. Hey, sir, I'm on live here. Anyways. Thank you. <laughs> You're, you're gonna hear my husband, you're gonna hear my little Loki, they, they live here too, so. This is, this is literally my life. Um, yes, it's so good, I love everything you're saying. Thank you, thank you. So what I'm gonna go back to is passion with social media, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna ask, what's the best way to grow Instagram following or friends, okay? Passion with social media, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I teach it. I currently, I'm like, I go in different routes, okay? Because I will be like <clears throat> video content creation, passionate and stuff like that, social media passionate, or I'm like salon passionate, like where I really wanna see my clients again, of course. I'm like in salon mode right now, okay? But I'm trying to get back into social media mode because I'm trying to live the words that I speak because I know how important content is. So what I did was I started to figure out my why again. And if you try to figure out what your why is of social media, it's gonna be a lot easier to go back to, to order to refresh your passion. You're probably over it because of the game. I get it. I, I hate the game, I hate the numbers, shit. I can't, I can't deal with that anymore. I have to go back to my fun content again, which is my hair hacks. That's where fun lives for me. And once I start doing things that I love, I don't hate it. I don't hate it anymore. So that's just a little bit piece of advice and maybe some meditation that'll help you. Okay, let me go back through some of the questions. Uh, tips on social media when you relocate salons to a new area. Okay, so I would say tips on, I'll give a general answer on just tips to get local people to come to your salon, okay? So there are a few things that I do. With social media, I'm constantly tagging my area that I'm in. I'm using certain hashtags. Hashtags are very, 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 very important. How do you get discovered otherwise? 
So, but think about hashtags like this. Remember we were talking about captions before? If you're writing a caption, like actually physically writing a caption, it's like beautiful blonde balayage. And it's like one sentence, it's like this big. And then all of your, your 30 hashtags are like this, right? Like, and people are looking at that. They're like, this girl's just here for the followers. This girl's just here to like stuff or get stuff liked for her. This, she just wants the comment. It's gimme, 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 gimme. So when you're not writing entertaining captions or educating people, that's the whole reason why people follow you on Instagram is for a knowledge bomb or something to be sparked of, okay? So make sure when you're writing your captions that you have a decent sized caption if you're going to use all 30 hashtags. Don't, it looks selfish is what I'm saying. So you can use all 30, but don't have like a one liner and then a bunch of hashtags, okay? Just give you an idea. So hashtags, um, Miami hairstylist, hairstylist Miami. Uh, people spell balayage wrong all the time. So you can actually like look up different hat, like balayage, biolage, like whatever. You can even do a, a bunch of different ones. So those are just some tips from getting people to come to you. Also, if you're in a different area, go find local restaurant owners, bartenders and tell them, hey, listen, I will do your hair at a discount if you just come and see me and here are a bunch of cards. And I want you to talk about me all day, every day. And you could use them as models for content too. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, let me go through some of the questions. How often would you recommend making videos on Instagram compared to videos? Okay, this is the best question ever. So I'm gonna talk a little, I'm gonna go back just a tiny bit to algorithms, okay? Algorithms, I figured this out over two years ago because I was not growing at all on my Instagram page and I couldn't understand why. Um, so what ends up happening is we're on our phone, I'm, a picture, okay? You have a picture on there, somebody sees it, oh, tap it, like it, whatever. They're just like, yeah, it's a nice picture, I'm gonna like it. But what happens when you're scrolling and you see a video? What happens, guys? What happens? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Yes, it actually plays. So what ends up happening is when the video plays automatically, it catches your attention. It's a good video, okay? And then all of a sudden, you watch the whole damn video and then you have a beautiful caption at the bottom, okay? So what ends up happening is, now you went from a picture that maybe somebody liked with an attention span of one, two, three, four seconds, to potentially watching the whole minute video, to potentially reading the entire caption. So now all of a sudden, you have an attention span of potentially a minute to two minutes, maybe even three minutes, if it's an IGTV the whole time. So people are watching your content for longer, correct. So when people watch your content for longer, Instagram says, wow, you just spent a minute to two minutes to three minutes on Olivia's post. You must really like Olivia. We're gonna make sure that Olivia shows up in your feed all of the time. How do you guys like that? That's why video is so successful on Instagram because people are spending a longer amount of time on your individual page, okay? So think about it like this. If you are known for Instagram, excuse me, if you are known for education and throughout your entire feed, you have these beautiful little Easter eggs of information, what's gonna happen is that's probably not the only post that they're gonna look at. They're probably gonna go to actual, your actual page and then start going through all your posts. And now Instagram's like, holy crap, you guys are best friends. I'm gonna make sure every single time Olivia posts that it's gonna show up on your feed. The whole way, the, only, the, the main way that a lot of these influencers are showing up all the time on your feed is because you keep watching their stuff. Am I right? You keep clicking on their stories. You keep watching their feeds. And through attention span, but also through consistency. Okay? I would say even consistency is more important than video. 
So you could be posting picture, 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 picture all day and you can still receive, um, it's, it's that momentum, right? You can still receive momentum, but going back to multi-level marketing, right? If you, they, I love this analogy. They say you can make as much money as you want or as little as money as you want. That's the same thing with Instagram. You can have as much attention as you want or as little as you want. But if you want maximum attention and you're only posting one time a week, you're not creating enough momentum to grow. Does that make sense? Can I get some thumbs up for that, please? So if you're not on a consistency, uh, if you're not on a consistent basis of what you're posting on social media, there's not enough momentum for you to grow very quickly on social media. So it's not that it's not that even influencers are better hairstylists than you. It's not that you can't do what they could do. The thing is, they're a little louder than you. They're a little louder than you. They're a little consistently louder than you. So what that means is they're consistently creating content and posting, okay? So um, I had a question and it was helpful tips for a striking bio, okay? So first and foremost, I'm gonna start from the very, very, very beginning, okay? Your picture, okay? If this is your personal page, uh, excuse me, you're, you're a hairstylist, okay? Or nail tech, facialist, wino, whatever you are, okay? It should be a picture of you. Chances are most of us now have ring lights, okay? Have a coworker on a white wall, a pink wall, a blue wall, any wall, just anything that looks consistent and not cluttered. I wouldn't recommend like a brick background. Something that's just like a flat color. Have your coworker take some pictures with you. I mean, I literally have like my ring light right here, my daylight right here. And have them take a nice picture of you in portrait mode, okay? That's it. Because when you have a nice picture of you on there, we don't realize, but some people have pictures of like the logo, which is okay if you have like the salon, like if it's a salon page, logo, great, awesome. Make it look pretty. Uh, do it professionally done, don't do it professionally done. But for your page, it should be a picture of you and make sure you're smiling. Guys, I did a whole class and it wasn't even about um, hair. It was a, another company. I was at a convention and they were talking about evoking emotions through photography. So if you have pictures of you crossing your arms and you're looking like a badass, but that's not you, that's not your brand. This is a power pose and it's extremely intimidating, okay? So think about that when you're taking your pictures, okay? Smiling is the most important thing you can do because you want to be welcoming towards those people. So if you have something that's like, like a sexy look, you're probably gonna attract people like that too, which is if that's what you want. But like I used to take pictures like that. Actually, I did a whole photo shoot and my favorite one was me in a power pose like with like a smirky smirk. But I was intimidating looking and I'm not. I'm very friendly. I'm like a golden retriever, literally, if I was a dog. So like, that's not me. That's like the, the side of me that I like to see. I'm no, I'm, I know I'm going pretty deep with this, but keep that in mind too when it comes to your feed photos. So if your client looks annoyed in the picture because they're not smiling, you're evoking a certain emotion for the person subconsciously thinking about those pictures, okay? Seeing those pictures, even if they're pictures of you. So you wanna make sure that everything is smiles. Like smile is literally my brand. When I'm recording video on my clients, what I do is I'm like, okay, you know, be lifestyle, like whatever, blah, 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 blah. Keep recording because you know what's gonna end up happening? Your client is literally gonna burst out laughing because they're uncomfortable. They're gonna go, ha, 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 okay? Keep recording because those are the parts of the video that I actually leave in at the end of my videos. Now you guys are gonna notice, when you go back through my page, 
It's at OMG Artistry on Instagram. You're gonna notice that at the very, very end, it's always a video of my client cracking up because I keep recording or I keep taking pictures, whatever. All right, we were talking about bio. We went into a whole nother world. Um, going back to bio. So most importantly, make sure that your name is there. So if you guys even look at my page, what it says right now, it says, I think it says Olivia Smalley hair hacks. So where your name is, did you guys know that that's actually searchable? Yes, it is searchable. So uh, for instance, what that means is like, if you're a, uh, let's say a balayage specialist, you could put like Anna balayage, balayage specialist. So keep in mind, there's only a certain amount of letters that you can use, but when people go to search stuff and they just put balayage specialist, or even if you just put like New York on there, if people just type in New York, your chances to pop up on the algorithm of the search on Instagram goes even higher. Keep that in mind. So I change, I change up my name so often. So like I'll put hair hacks in there. I'll put like Joyco in there. I'll put like a social media expert, you know, I'll put, I'll always put Olivia Smalley, but like social media or something like that, just to uh, ramp up my algorithms. So I'm going to state some obvious things. Make sure you tell people what you do. So on my page, I say blonde specialist. Um, and then I say extension specialist, ex accepting uh, tape and weft only, right? I say my location. Um, and I also, is there anything else I'm missing when it comes to that with to bio? So yeah, those are everything that you can do for your bio. Um, and also make sure you're just switching it up and you're constantly updating it and make sure whatever URL, uh, excuse me, website, website that you're using links back to something. So whether that's like your booking online, your website uh, at the salon, maybe your YouTube page, maybe if you have an event bright or something coming up, make sure it's always linking back. Hi everybody, I see Ricardo in here. Uh, great tips, that was so important, this is so good, you're the best, oh my God, thank you guys, I appreciate that. Um, Okay, this is great info, but being straight out of school, what is a great start on education and post? Give me a little more context. Give me a little more context because I, I know what you're saying, but I want to see which direction I can take this in. Um, you look stunning. Thank you. I put on makeup today, guys. This is like bare minerals and like a lot of blush and lip gloss. Um, should we update our profile pic often? Great question. So... Um, every once in a while, you guys will see that this is my, this is my social media hack. Okay. So I'm about to do it too. So, uh, next Wednesday I filmed this TV reality show almost like a year and a half ago now, and it's called the look all stars. And I, um, it's actually finally coming out next Wednesday at seven o'clock. I'll have all that information on my page. But what I'm going to do is, two days before, I'm going to change my profile picture. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because people are gonna be like, who is this that I'm following? And they're gonna to go to my page. And I'm gonna start posting that it's going to be uh, going live next Wednesday, okay? But it kind of makes them go to my page because now it's a new picture. And they're like, wait, who is this? And they click on it and now they're on my page. So if you guys do that, it'll actually increase your profile views. Sneaky, sneaky, right? You like that? So, um, so it'll increase your profile views when you switch your picture. You will notice because they're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Um, congrats on the look. Thank you. Yes, it's going to be an amazing episode. So I'll have all that information on uh, Friday. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, maybe like two days after, or the day that show airs, I'm going back to my regular picture because my picture, um, my picture is uh, branded. So what that means is my Twitter photo is the same, my Facebook picture is the same. Um, I literally have been using the same photo everywhere. And I'll tell you guys why. So one time I was at a hair show and I literally was like, people, 
people didn't make the connection that my Instagram page was what they saw on the board, okay, when they showed like my picture. So what I did was I used whatever was on the board, I used that picture on my Instagram page because then people made the connection, okay? So let's say for you guys, for salon owners and stuff, what you should do is you guys should have framed um, Instagrams with that picture, not like a side picture, whatever the Instagram picture is and their handle, because then when they go to search, they can connect the two dots. Does that make sense? You guys like that? Um, I love your profile pic. Thank you. Uh, Darina actually took that uh, at a show a few years ago. Thank you for this amazing advice. Oh no, this is, this is fun for me. I definitely love doing social media. Um, do you recommend using your real name as your uh, screen name? So meaning your IG name. So guys, if I, don't get me wrong, I love OMG artistry. I love OMG artistry. But if I could change my name, it would be OMG Olivia. Like that would be my Instagram handle. So what ended up happening was I was, uh, I was at Premier Orlando, I don't know, three years ago or something like that. And I had ran into uh, Your Day Off, which is the podcast guys, okay? So I didn't know their name. I did not know their name. And when he went to go introduce me, he didn't know my name either, okay? Because it was just OMG artistry, right? Like your username slowly becomes your name is what they say. So I realized that I need to start publicizing my name more. So there's one thing that I do and it's called subliminal hashtagging. So you guys are gonna start noticing all these little things that I've been doing. So I actually, uh, I with my hashtags, my first one is hashtag OMG artistry, hashtag Olivia Smalley, hashtag blonde specialist, okay? Because subliminally people read your hashtags okay oh and then uh social queen was the hashtag my team gave me that name so they would now subliminally read my hashtags and now people started to actually know my name i swear to god and then i also put it like i also will put um uh like different hashtags that i want to be known for in my bio as well so you have to start subliminally to answer your question Sorry, my brother just tried to call me. Um, subliminally having people to know your name through subliminal hashtagings and what you do. So blonde specialist, um, I do social queen, I do all these different hashtags, I switch it up, but my main four is always Olivia Smalley, hashtag OMG artistry, um, hashtag blonde specialist, hashtag social queen. Do you know that I've never put social queen anywhere else besides my hashtags and now people will call me that. So if you wanna be known for something or an alias, because this is a part of brand building now, okay? If you wanna be known for something, you have to let people know. You have to hashtag it, you have to claim it, right? Okay, I'm gonna go back through some more questions. Um, do you advise changing your handle if you already have a small following? Okay, do I advise changing your handle if you already have a small following or published an editorial? So my advice is like if you're, um, if the editorial just happened, maybe not. Um, if you just got on a team and they send out press releases or whatever, I maybe not. However, Gina Bianca was the hair doctor forever, forever. She just changed it like a year ago and she's got over 250,000 followers. I mean, Rebecca Taylor did the same thing. I don't even remember what hers was before, but Rebecca Taylor changed hers. I mean, people change their names all the time. I tried to buy OMG Olivia. I was literally this close to changing it, but the girl wanted like $10,000 for OMG. I was like, no, forget it. I'm not spending $10,000 for an Instagram page. Um, do your Instagram stories affect the algorithm as much as content on your page? Okay, great question. So with Instagram stories, you can look at Instagram stories as its own social media, okay? So when you're constantly creating content for stories, let's just say anything, could be you at the salon, your dog, your family, whatever, quarantine time, right? You, through consistency, 
through consistency, Instagram is rewarding you for being there. So when you look at your stories and it's all those little bubbles, right? If you're consistently posting, it's gonna keep pushing you to the front, okay? When you're consistent and people keep clicking on it, you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep going in. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. When you are consistently popping up and people are clicking on you, then your algorithm starts to boost and then that's how your page views start to boost, okay? Does that make sense? Um, so yes, you should be posting on stories as much as you can. Um, there's no, I mean, if you're posting advertisements after advertisements, like people are not gonna want, your sto want to watch your stories. So like you need to be posting entertaining stuff, educating stuff, inspiring stuff, not just reposts all the other times of you getting like on somebody else's stories. Or like if you're a salon owner and your stylist just keeps tagging you in a bunch of stuff and you repost it all the time, but you're not creating your own content for that page, nobody's gonna watch your stories. Nobody wants to watch advertisements all day. So that's what you kind of have to consider like when it comes uh, to stories. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing like 35 stories either that aren't entertaining. I mean, if it's 35 entertaining, really good stories, like by all means, but if it's just kind of like crap, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't do 30. I would at least recommend doing like anywhere from two to five stories. But keep in mind, guys, I'm not going to tell you how much to post, but I will tell you that the more you are engaged on the platform, the more you will get rewarded. Okay. Multi-level marketing. Um, so you guys can keep asking uh, some more questions. Should I have the same picture for my IG and my Facebook page? Yes, your picture should be consecutive through all of your social medias, through TikTok, uh, Twitter, through um, Instagram, Facebook, all of them, okay? Is it rude to not repost things people tag us in? Who? Um, so what I always consider is, let's say for instance, somebody tags me in something and it doesn't really fit my brand or like it, the picture's really dark or like the background is not good or it, the quality of the photo is not good, um, I always say thank you. Like I'll always write them back in. Or I even send a lot of voice messages. Maybe some of you guys have actually got them in here, but I send a lot of voice messages back. Um, it's more personable. I think not a lot of people do that. So people are like, oh shit, she, like she sent me, a, excuse my language, uh, she just sent me like a video, a voice message, like that, that's pretty cool, you know? It's a lot faster, actually. I'm trying to save my thumbs. Um, so, but if it fits my brand, yes, I'll absolutely repost it. But keep in mind, you guys can always dress up a repost. So like you can add your own um, gifts to it, gifs, uh, to it. You can like write super cute things on it. So like you can dress it up for your stories to kind of look on brand, okay? Um, let me see some of the questions. Best time of the day to post. Should we be posting the same time each day? Okay. So what the algorithms are changing so much and so often that I think you just have to be mindful of where you live and who you're following is. Okay. So like if you have 50% in New York city and 50% in California, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, like those would be good times of the day. But let's say for instance, you're trying to target. So you have to think about your target audience too. If your target audience is moms that are hard workers or entrepreneurs, right? That go to work, they're doctors, dentists, whatever, right? You might wanna consider posting first thing in the morning because that's when they're checking their page or at 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night because that's when they're checking their page, okay? If you have like a video that's like super good that you want to do really, really well, I would post it like on a Sunday, okay? If it's like a, for clients, a client's video. So if you have a video and you're in education, like myself, I would post that on a Monday. So like you almost have to take into consideration what kind of content it is, who your target audience is, and where you live 
to really figure out when, what time would be the best time and day to post your content. So if you have a video that you want to do really, really well, I would say post it at like three o'clock on a Sunday or like maybe like at seven or eight o'clock at night. That's what I would do. Pictures, three o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, depend on your target audience. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, how do you brand yourself? Oh, I love this question. And it's actually not a question um, that I get very often, but a question that I do like to talk about. Okay, so um, by the way, tell me how much time we're running because I don't even think it tells me on here. I don't want to go like over time. Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.45 p.m. Okay, we're good. Um, I have like another uh, 15 more minutes. So how do you brand yourself? Think about this, okay? I have chosen a color. I have chosen a color and I literally buy that color in everything. And it is a dusty mauve pinky color, okay? When I go out, when I work at the salon, when I take pictures, I take pictures in whites, pinks, or sometimes like a baby blue color. That's like my undertone color, okay? Look at my shirt. My shirt is pink. Sorry, I got so excited. Okay, my shirt is pink. My shirt is pink. Denim, right? Pink blankets. OMG, pink, right? Like everything, everything is on brand all the time. Like my blush is freaking pink. My lip is pink. Like my freaking brush is pink. Like, so what ends up happening is when people, when people start to recognize a color, a texture, they think of you, okay? Any live that I've ever done, I'm wearing a pink shirt. Um, I will even dress my clients in like denim, pink, white, because let's say for instance, when I'm going to make a video or a photo of them, if they're already in something that matches my brand color, when I go to post it on my feed, I'm creating a brand layout based around those colors because they're wearing that shirt. So if I am doing like a lot of like white wall ring light stuff and they have a pink shirt on or a baby blue shirt or a white shirt, it's going to match my feed for my layout. Does that make sense? Like I dress my clients and I have a client that was wearing a red shirt and it like was the most amazing transformation. It was platinum to highlights with like low lights. It was sick, but like I can't stop staring at her red shirt because it wasn't matching my feet anymore. So that's kind of just like a way for you to start creating through your branding. Um, also, I feel like just branding, I gotta put this back on here cause I don't want you guys to like wiggle and get like sick. Okay, so another thing through branding is personality. So like for me, what I always do is I try to always showcase my best self all the time. The problem with getting on video is you have to get used to yourself on video. But how do we do that? Actors do not just act. They practice acting, right? So we have to practice being ourselves on camera. How do we do that? I will tell you that I chuck up my ability to speak through constantly going on stories. When you go on stories and you hate it, what do you do? You re-record it, right? And you re-record it. And you re-record it until it's perfect. But basically, every single time that you're doing that, it's improv. So you're learning how to speak and how to get used to yourself online. 50% of the reason why people come and see us in the salon is because of us, okay? That's the same thing with social media. 50% of the reason why they're following you on social media is because of you. It's because of your personality. It's what you're bringing to the table because people can replicate hair to look very similar all the time, but how do you stand out in a world full of ring lights and white walls? Through personality. So that's why it's so important for you guys to show yourself on social media. That's what's gonna get people to keep coming back. That's what's going to, to give life to a page, okay? And yes, 
it is scary. Being live right now, I mean, like, this is literally me in the flesh. Like, this is scary. But over time, because I know what I'm talking about now, it becomes that much easier to get on here. So it's just a practice, okay? And through your personality, that's what creates branding, okay? I make sure that in every single video that I do for my social media pages, that I make a cameo. Some way, somehow, I make a cameo in every single one of these videos. Think about all the top influencers. They're in every single one of their videos, right? It's all about branding, okay? Sorry, I got really into that one. That's exciting. So yeah, brand colors, brand personality, and just all over living your brand. Literally living your brand. Do you always post your same IG stories to your Facebook stories? Um, yes, I do. IG is my main platform. That's where I get most of my clientele. That is where my largest following is. So I always take my IG and then I repurpose it for Facebook. I have been on Facebook now for since the beginning. And let me just give you a spectrum. I have maybe 10,000 followers on my Facebook page. And I have like almost like 175,000 on my Instagram page. And I've been on Facebook way longer. So if that tells you where my audience is, Instagram is where everybody's at. Like, yeah, people are on Facebook too. And I think that it's important, but repurposing your content to Facebook is like probably the best way to do everything. Um, a cameo is to like make an appearance. So like you'll cameos are like an old movie thing. Like you'll see like cameo of like Danny DeVito like walking by or saying or or Stan Lee. He makes a cameo in all of his Avenger movies. So that's what a cameo is. So you have to make a cameo in all of your videos to have a special appearance. Um, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, this info is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Keep keep the questions coming. Um, this, me talking to you guys, because I've been, you know, we're all going through a reddish right now. Um, me talking to you guys right now is already like re-sparking like my passion for, for social media again. And I think just sometimes we just overthink it. We just overthink it. So there's something called um, uh, paralysis by analysis. So what that means is that you overanalyze something so much that you actually are paralyzing yourself and then you just don't do anything at all. You know, like you ever heard somebody say like, I have so much stuff to do today and I'm gonna take a nap instead. That is literally analysis paralysis. And I feel like a lot of times people do that to themselves and then they just don't get anywhere. Or they're like me, they're perfectionists. And that is something that I've had to get over because nothing will ever be perfect if there is no execution because you can't get better if there, if you don't execute anything, okay? So if that gives you just a little peace of mind. Um, video editing, how do you feel like the trend of less perfected editing is going to keep going or is it just because of quarantine trending? So funny you say that because I was just saying through perfection, okay? so. I think, I know actually, I have some videos that I have professionally done with videographers and it's like, you know, panning motions of the products and, and stirring and all, they never do well. They never, ever, ever do well on my Instagram page. And I'm like, what the hell? I just paid for this video. Um, why isn't it doing well? Because, conceptual, more cut up videos is, is not raw. Like people want to see more raw. People are actually obsessed with voices coming out of faces. Okay. So what that means is if you guys go to my Instagram page and you look at my video, I have formented almost like a vloggy style video for for my viewers and why i'm doing that is because again i do so much research and when you're actually talking to the camera um people feel more connected to you 
okay? So what I do is like I begin and I go, oh my God, guys, we're so excited. We have this going on today, da, da, da. And I show them my client. Of course I get permission. That's a whole nother thing. I get permission, all that stuff. If my clients are coming to me because they found me on IG, chances are that they know that they're gonna be on my IG page. And in the beginning, I didn't have those clientels. I had to get models. We could talk about that another time. But I get a vloggy style video and then I go in and I cut. And there's a lot of times that I'll be foiling and I'm actually talking to the camera and saying exactly what I'm doing. And people are so like attracted to hear the voice, to hear the technique, that they stay on my videos longer. So I'm talking about almost like IGTV formats. So it would actually be who of you to leave your videos much longer because there's much more information. And also when, because IGTV is so new right now, Instagram is like really pushing it. So you're actually, if you scroll on your Instagram page right now, you're gonna see like every fourth or fifth post is an IGTV. So if you post on IGTV, you're more susceptible to get shown on the feed, okay? Um, what editing tool do I use? So I actually do use iMovie. So I can actually, um, uh, it's my website, uh, www.omgartistry.com. It's under education. I actually have a full video on how to edit, how to film, and how to edit video without using an assistant. So you guys could actually even just direct message me directly and I can send you the link. Just direct message me on IG and I'll, I'll send you the link right after this video is done. Um, please, po uh, please explain the difference between posting a video on Instagram versus IGTV. So when you post um, just a regular video on Instagram, that is a minute or less. When you post a video on IGTV, that is a minute or more. So max is 10 minutes. I've actually seen some people post an hour video. I don't know, I don't have that feature yet, but um, that is the difference. So it just lives in two different ways. Um, is posting mannequin photos on IG okay, or is it better to only post live models? So I think considering what's going on right now, posting mannequin heads is like amazing because people are taking a lot of online education right now and they probably only have access to mannequins. Um, do I think it's a little creepy when they start dressing up the mannequins and putting glasses on them and putting leather? Yes, it is a little creepy. Um, it's a good laugh for me. It's, it's kind of like an inside joke now, uh, but I think why not? It's a technique. It's a technique, it's beautiful hair that you're doing at your house. So I think both, do both, whatever fits your fancy. Um, can I have the link? Yes, you can. Just shoot me a direct message uh, at OMG Artistry on Instagram after this video and I'll send you uh, the link to the video on how to film and edit video without an assistant. Um, I think it's hilarious though. Yeah, I think it's super funny. Um, will this be replayed? I just joined. Yes. And Andrea, we have so much information on here. Um, it will live forever on Salon Centric's Facebook page. They're also going to put it on YouTube. I mean, they're going to blast this video everywhere. This is this, what I'm teaching you guys right now is what I teach in my classes, um, that people actually pay for. I don't, it's not about the money for me. It's about getting the information out there. It's about uh, entertaining, educating, inspiring you guys, right? Like it's just about making sure that anyone in their little hometown to their big hometown knows how to just thrive on Instagram. Like literally, I just, I just want you guys to thrive because it can be super, super confusing. Um, it could be, am I doing this right? Am I not doing this right? There's a lot of times like that I'll actually just go to other influencers pages and I'll be like, okay, what are they doing? And I make it my own, you know? Um, I make it my own or I'll even like give them credit for whatever I see that they're doing that I'm like, damn, like that is super cute or I love that trend. I need to recreate that for myself. And I always give credit, always give credit. My Instagram name is at OMG Artistry. Um, any of my people on here, if you could just put uh, at OMG Artistry just so they know how to spell it. Will you be doing more online classes? Yes, I will definitely be doing more online social media classes uh, coming up soon because as we know, everything is kind of um, digital right now uh, for, for what we're doing. Um, but uh, next week, 
on Wednesday at seven o'clock. They're releasing this reality show that I was just on about a year and a half ago. Um, and I have, on, this is gonna be crazy because there are so many different hair hacks and tips that I share like on this, uh, on this reality show. It's called The Look All Stars. So it's airing next Wednesday. I'll have all that information on my Instagram stories um, for you guys. So yeah, just a few more things just to kind of like wrap this up is when you guys are on Instagram, you can't look at it like a job. It's a part of your job, but you can't look at it as like, oh shit, I have to post today, right? Because if you do that, then you're gonna hate your job, okay? So what I would like you to do is if you wake up in the morning and you feel so uninspired to post something, please don't, please don't post it. But what I would like you to do is maybe go Talk to some friends on your Instagram page, on their Instagram page. Go comment on their stuff. Go like their stuff. Maybe edit a picture. Maybe edit a video. So give yourself two times per week, right? That you can commit 30 minutes to just instantly posting online every single day. So what that means is if you committed 30 minutes today to writing two or three different captions, once it comes down to those days, you already have those captions in place and you already have those photos in place. And then when you're posting on a, on a Tuesday morning, let's say at nine o'clock, you're spending the time engaging on Instagram, not figuring out what your caption is and posting because that's the most tedious part. And then you're like, oh, I'm over this. So if you spend that 30 minutes, because you already know what you're posting a picture, you already know what you're posting in your caption, and you spend 30 minutes engaging, you're going to reap more benefits engaging than figuring out what your post is right then and there. Does that make sense? Um, have been feeling so inspired this week, but this video has helped me so much. Oh, thank you, Courtney. You're amazing. Do you plan out posts in the beginning of your weeks? I try to. I'm not perfect. I'm really not perfect, but I really do try to. Thank you for sharing this priceless information. I love you, I love you. David, Jessica, Frankie, I see all you guys in here. Uh, came in late, did you say that you were gonna share a link to the recording and editing videos? Um, yes, I can actually do that. Uh, what I'll do is, what I'll do guys is, as soon as this video is done, I'll comment in your comment box and I'll put the link on there too. So you could just check that or you can direct message me um, afterwards. So I'm signing off. This was like awesome. I appreciate like all your guys' engagement, all your questions. I'm like amped up and like nowhere to go. I need to go like ride my bike or something because my adrenaline is like <laughs> through the roof right now. Um, but make sure you guys follow me at OMG Artistry. Salon centric, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me on this platform, um, on this Facebook Live. This will be saved, okay? As soon as I end it, I'm gonna share it. It'll be saved. Send it to all your hairstylist friends, all your salon owners, maybe people that you work with. Um, thank you guys. Thank you so, so much. Oh, let's take a screenshot and then send it to me because I won't be able to do it. Yay! And post it on your stories, okay? Mwah! Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.